Hello, everyone. We are back. We are back. And better than ever. And back. <laughs> I'm not better than ever. So, how was your week? It was eventful. Guess what I did? What did you do? I played soccer. You played soccer? Yep. You want me show you my legs? Because it'll tell you I played soccer, and it'll also set, tell you that I'm 44. You bruised up for the battle? That's the understatement of the century. I am brute. I look like I look like I've been in the biggest fight in America. Did you win? No. <laughs> well. But guess what? What? It's okay. Guess what I'm doing as we speak? What? I'm making our charcuterie board. Mm-hmm. So if you hear me moving around, that's because I'm dealing with cheese and like rose meat. Wow. Okay. Trying to make meat into a rose. Mm. Probably won't happen. So what else you do? So so no, wait. So you really enjoyed that whole thing? How was it for you? No, I loved it. Uh huh. I loved it. Um, it was funny. So like mm -hmm. the first time I went on the field. Mm hmm. Because this team, guess what they do? What? You just go play games. Do you practice? Of course not. Why would mm -hmm. you practice? I right. don't know. We don't practice. Go out there, and I was playing defender, which I have not played. Mm hmm. And I had not run in cleats in 20 right. Some years, years. <laughs> which is going to stick with 20. Mm -hmm. And um, so I take off running. The ground jumps up, grabs me by the ankles like a champ. Mm -hmm. And it really hurt my feelings. And it's totally fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. No one's mad about it. Right. It really hurt. I'm, I'm yeah. sure it did. So, how was your week? Because you're really, I was the one who was at home. Mm -hmm. You got more stories to tell than I do. I was in New York City. Concrete jungle where dreams are made of. Mm. And so, I had a great time. Um, I was there working with a um, choir. And um, so, we did a performance at Carnegie Hall. So, Shout out to um, Dr. Lynn. Shout out. Yeah, I'm gonna give a shout out to Dr. Lynn Gacko, to Dr. Jeffrey Ames, to Marion Gomez, to wonderful people at World Strides and the wonderful work that you do. It was a whole lot of fun. We rehearsed, we rehearsed, and my wonderful students, they sang incredibly, my incredible accompanist. So it was fun. It was the neat thing about it is like when they, you know, any time I walk into Carnegie Hall, I get kind of, I get emotional. Because it's like, wow, you know, what a beautiful hall and the history of the hall and, and all that stuff. And just to be a part of something like that is absolutely... You get emotional. M moving. So, yeah. And you so, are one of the sweetest people I know. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, easy for me to get emotional. But, uh, <laughs> so, but to see the students, what was so cool, those, many of those students, it was, it was their first time. And as they walked in, they became emotional and started taking selfies of themselves. It's, you know... Like they're on the stage, and it's just to see them in that moment, and to be able to share that moment with them, man, it's absolutely incredible. I don't think so, it would have to be. Yeah. Like as a teacher. Yeah, it is and like. A, and a singer person. Yeah. Musician. I mean, is that, you said, <laughs> I said singer, person. singer person. You know, and, and it's, it's neat because you know they share some of their background, and they come from all over the country, and so it's just neat to see them like different socioeconomic status, different belief systems, different whatever, but they're all there for one, you know, for one goal, one goal. And it was absolutely beautiful, you know, seeing to inspire and they inspired that audience and they inspired me. And so I, you know, was really emotional just to see them kind of bloom and grow. Well, I played soccer guys. <laughs> and he made people bloom and grow while I played soccer. Wow. I bloomed and grow in my soccer plan. Yes, you did. That's right. Listen, let me tell you something, though. Like, I ain't even lying. I ain't even playing. Um, I'm 44 years old. Mm hmm And I don't care how much I sucked. Mm hmm I'm proud of myself. Because it was out of my comfort zone to go and play. Listen, there's me that's 44. There's a guy who is 56. And then everyone else is like, 24. Mm -hmm. And they have names like Patty and O'Neill. And they're like, let's do a full 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> and I'm like, we're in Winter Garden and you're Scottish. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, 
And they're like, Christy, where are you going? I, I don't know. Who are you? Are you on my team? Are you the opposing team? I yeah. don't even know. But mm -hmm. I'm going to listen to you because you said my name. Like, right. But to go out there in a place where you don't have a best friend and you don't have... A safety net, basically. Yeah, and to walk out all on mm -hmm. your own and just say, you know what? Here we go. I'm yeah. just going to do this thing. I was proud of me for that. Like, very, that I'm, a, very, I'm very proud of you also. Because, that was like big girl status. Yeah. That was very proud. Like, Though, I did call you. You were getting ready to go into Carnegie Hall, and I call you almost in tears. I'm nervous. <laughs> guess what? What? I was nervous. Well, you did, and I was no proud of you. I was super nervous. Um... It was scary to me. Yeah? Yeah. Well. But. I you did, did it. it. Sorry, guys. I'm opening them up. I'm opening my them up. Mm. I'm opening up mm. some crackers right now. Is this beautiful to you? It's absolutely stunning. Thank you. No problem. He's looking at me like. Like, I'm yeah. not going to sit and say, oh, girl, it looks so terrible. But it does look good. That kind of hurt my feelings, and now I feel like you're less valid than what you might want. <laughs> Actually, I'm so not going to. So now I'm questioning you as a person. No, it looks good. It really, it re it really looks good. I mean, it's a, here's the thing. We have a meeting, and we were going to buy a charcuterie board because there's mm -hmm. this new place in Winter Garden, and then we couldn't find it. So now we're on the fly making a charcuterie board, and anyway. But, yeah. yeah. I'm doing the best I can. So. And, yeah, it looks great. <laughs> Why do I feel like you're condescending? I mean, I'm really not being condescending. You would know if I'm being condescending. I mean, it's, not, it's not really passive oh, with me. Luck. I think we're going to have to have a runoff board. We're going to have to have a presentation and then like one, like a dig in. That's what we should do. We should just create a dig in board and have like a casserole a dish and, just board. Throw, and throw meat and sauces in it. But like, look at this one. Take photos. Is it? And the other one. Because this is not really feasible to eat off of. It is. I would be nervous. I wouldn't. At all. <laughs> well, there's no lie detector. Is it? At all. Anyway. So, you know what we're talking about today? No, tell me what we're talking about. As you put some, I literally meat. shoved a piece of meat in my mouth. I'm like, no. it's prosciutto. That's mm -hmm. my favorite. Right. Sorry. Quit side feeding my dog. So what are we? What are we um talking about? I almost said New York. <laughs> <laughs> Concrete jungles. Um. Well, we're talking about physical touch. Did you know that that is my love language, my numero uno? Yours was quality time. Mine is physical touch. Hmm. That's what we're going to talk about okay. today. So, my love language, physical touch. Thank okay. you for coming to my podcast. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for real. But no, you know, we're going to get a little spicy. Okay. When I talk about this. And a lot of people... Think that because your love language is physical touch, that that means like, bow, chicka, bow, bow. Mm -hmm. Right. And it doesn't mean, I mean, it can right, mean right, that, right. but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Like, I am a hugger. I hug people. You know I hug people. Yep. Um, I'm a touchy-feely person. If I love you, if I, I mean, if I like you, I'm probably going to hug you. Right. Well, Let's give an example. We went to one of my friends' house thing the other day. Mm-hmm. And she introduces me. My friend introduces me to one of her friends that I've never seen in life. And what did I awkwardly do? Hug her. I hugged her. It wasn't awkward for me, but like... It was a full-on frontal. <laughs> bring you into my life hug. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And she thought it was weird, you could tell. But that girl looked like, okay. I mean, that's just who I am. Yeah. That's true. Because I'm a physical touch person. Right. Um, and a lot of times, like, so what that means is that, like, if you're my person or your parent or my friend, my friends hug me all the time. Um, me and my friend Jacqueline, we've got numerous pictures of me and her, like, holding hands. Mm -hmm. Like... We'll walk arm in arm. We'll hold hands in the store, like mm -hmm. when she comes to visit. Um, me and Michelle hug all the time or hit each other. Either way, you know, it's whatever. Um, but I also hug my kids. Yeah. 
Yeah. And like, I was the one who always wanted to sit on my mom and dad's lap Mm -hmm. and like watch TV. Right. So like, even as a kid, like not in the, not in the romantic way, throwing all of that out, not in the romantic way. I'm a physical touch person with everybody in my life. Mm -hmm. Also in the romantic way. Mm -hmm. I'm a physical touch person. So what does that mean? People will ask. Yeah. What does that mean? That means I want to hold hands. Right. I will, if I'm sitting beside you, I will probably stick like my foot under your leg, put Mm -hmm. my feet on your lap, Mm -hmm. hold your hand, put my Mm -hmm. head in your lap, want your head on my lap. Right. Like I want, I literally want to touch the person. Right. And that ranked where for you? Where did physical touch rank for you? Well, three, I think it was. Yes, because you were quality time. Quality time. Your number one. Where my number one was physical touch, and then quality word. time was my number three, and physical touch was your number three. We right. both had words of affirmation as number two. Number two, yeah. We talk about that next week. Right. It was it was funny for me. It's like okay, if my physical touch is number three, it's like it goes like okay, quality time, that connection, words of affirmation, that support. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> physical touch, the holding of the hands, or something like that. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of weird how that kind of goes. Now, when I was younger, I look back, I wonder, was it, was it flipped? You know what I'm saying? And I, and so now I'm on this journey of wondering, okay, do the love languages change by seasons of your life? And things that you go through or, so, or, or, you know, you're a different place in your life. Does that change? You know, I've always been a hugger. You know, I, I look back when I was a kid, I've always been a hugger. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's like, I wonder, does that change as you get older? And I don't have to answer to that question. I've been that way. I've been a physical touch person since mm-hmm. I was, since always. Right. Like... Like, literally, since always. I need that connection, like the human connection with another person. Right. You know, um, there is a lot of people who, like, for me personally, I mean, you know, you do you. Right. Like, whatever. But I have got people that I know of who will literally sleep in different rooms. Than their mm-hmm. spouse. Right. That for me, I would feel so unloved. Mm-hmm. Like if my spouse did not want to sleep in the same room with me. Right. I would be like, I don't care if you snore. Mm-hmm. Well, shut up. Get a CPAP machine. I'm going to need you to go to the doctor. We're going to work through this. But for me, being in a different room would never be an option. Right. Because like, I need to be able to stick my foot <laughs> on your leg. Oh, listen. <laughs> We we always want a foot to be present for you. <laughs> like, okay. Like, hey, I need to know you're there. Right. Um, like, because I would, like, but the thing is, it's not like a, I would literally not feel loved. Right. Like, I need to be hugged. I'm a person who needs to be kissed. I need to be, like, I need to know you're there. Right. And I need it for my kids. Yeah. Like, if my kids don't hug me. I, I I said to Bella today, she's like, okay, I'll see you later. I was like, I don't know where you're going. <laughs> and she's like, I'm going to know us. And I was like, no, I know that. You've told me that. Mm. Um, How about come hug your mom? And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. But right. she came and hugged me. Right. And it's like. <laughs> right. I'll take forced hugs. <laughs> like, I, I'll get, I'll take the forced. Yeah. Thing. But let me ask you this, as a person who has it as a number three and not uh-huh. a number one, mm-hmm. how would you cope if you had a person? And I, I hate using kids as an example because I think of love languages as a kid. I'm not going to judge how my children show me love. Like, right. I will now that they're adult and yeah. I'm back, listen. But like, if your kids are little... They don't know what your love language is. Mm. This is a lot to teach them. So please don't push this on your children. Be like, I need you to hug me. Right. And you're four. 
I don't feel like you're showing me the proper. You're not reading my love language. I need hugs. Mm-hmm. Therefore, yeah, Tammy, sit down. Right, 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 right. But I just decided their name was Tammy. No I mean, offense really to any like Tammy's it. out there. Um, but but like to read your kids' love language. Uh huh. I think it's important that you cater to your children so your children know that you love them, but not vice versa. But in a relationship, it's you should cater to their and they should cater to yours. But so, but you not having that as a priority. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's in the middle. Yeah. So you like no, it. It's a priority. But, yeah. But would it bother you if somebody struggled? Was a non physical toucher. It would bother me if I did not understand where it came from, because innately you think that it's you, right? Yeah, and so, I think that's the thing. So you know, if it's I, like I a rejection. Yeah, I need to because everyone has triggers, and you can step on someone else's trigger mm-hmm. when it has nothing to do with you. So you know what I'm saying. So if someone is not about physical touch, it's you know it has nothing to do with you. It's Okay, or if it does, tell them. You know, if it doesn't, tell them. You know, but then once you get an understanding of what's going on, then I say, then be more intentional. If you know this is an issue, you need to be, but if the other person needs that, you need to be more intentional in doing that. You know what I'm saying? To help the person out. Right. You know, to help the person that's wrong where I, but you know, to grow with the person. Um, and so there are some things that just have to be intentional. Well, like what um, he talks about in the book all the time is filling your love tank. If you love a person, you, you you want them to feel loved by you if you love them. So if they're telling you, hey, I feel like this is lacking. Right. You want to do the things to make sure that they feel loved. Yeah. So if like physical touch is their thing or spending more time together is their thing, you want to do that, but you have to understand how to do it. Yeah, and the thing about like, like if somebody came up to me and was like going like this, like mm, 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 what are they? poking me in the face. Uh-huh. Sorry, not a visual medium. Oh, like, I added it. Up. I added it. Oh, uh-huh. But I did poke him in the face for uh-huh. real life. But like, it just was poking you. Okay, you're physically touching me, but you're also there's a good chance you're going to get a Joker smile. Like that doesn't say that you love me. Okay, you know what I mean, right? But like, if you come up and a squeeze on the shoulder, mm-hmm. can mean. So much. Yeah. You know, it's not like all about a makeout section or, you know, marathon sex. There's oh, there's Lord. a squeeze of an arm. Right, right, right. Like, hey, that's huge. Yeah. You know, a squeeze of a knee. Mm-hmm. Or like riding in a car, they reach over and grab your hand and squeeze it. It's not like this. I mean, for some people it may be. Right. And all of it can be great. But as a standard go to mm-hmm. it's just that touch of that other person's there right and the thing about it is also i'm i'm a firm believer that um you also have to create the environment to be inspired to do that and what do i mean by that you you can't you can't be mean and hateful right and then turn around to myself kiss me my number one is physical touch <laughs> Please kiss and hug me. I said, oh, poor baby, you went through depression. <laughs> no. Well, that, I think that yeah. kind of goes with all of it, you, like even with quality time. Yeah. You can't be rude and hateful and then be like, hang out with me. Yeah, I was like, I'm mm. sorry. No, mm. that ain't happening. Mm-mm. You know, it's, no, it's, so I think part of it is also creating the environment to inspire that to happen. You know, it, it's, it, and so I, I, it's, I think they just go hand in hand. And that's just what I personally think. No, no research base. It's just what I personally think. Um, but you also have to look at this. The order of your love language, does it come about because of the way that you were raised? I don't know. You bring that up. You've no. said that a lot. I yeah, don't know. It, I, I think about it because I said, you know, it's just, I just wonder, you know, ups and downs of your childhood, does it all of a sudden line up if you, if you're a person didn't, did not get physical affection from your parents, all of a sudden, is it? strong for you to have physical affection, you know, as your number one. I don't know. You know, I would think it would, you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't, you know, you was talking about um, physical touch. 
physical touch is just, you know, also like you see your friends. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's acknowledgement. What's up? You know what I'm saying? It's doing this thing. Doing what thing? Give me your hand. I mean, you gotta describe it. You know, no, not giving that. that. <laughs> but, uh, that thing. But That's you know, physical touch? Okay. But it's, I'm, I'm it's, serious. No, no, no. I'm I'm just saying that sometimes it's those moments of a hug or those moments of a shake in the hand, like like you said, mean so much. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You haven't seen a friend in a long time. You know, especially with the effects of COVID. And then you go, you know, like when I was in New York, it felt good to look at my brother Jeff. And just give him a hug. Because I hadn't, I didn't realize I hadn't seen Jeff since before COVID. Jeff Ames. Mm-hmm. Since before COVID. I caught up. I was, I was tripping yeah. out for a minute. But yeah. I and then so, 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 <laughs> Jeffrey Ames. Who you, Jeff? Not Jeff. No, Jeffrey yeah. Ames, you know. Or see, you know, Lynn Gackle. And like, you know, I just saw her in October. That's my friend. And it's like, I remembered Lynn being in Tampa. And I would go over every Monday to watch her teach the, you know, teach her, you know, the women's choir there and just an incredible technician. And no, she's my dear friend, you know, and her husband. We hugged each other like, you know, we was in New York and we just hugged each other. And that was that physical touch of acknowledgement. These are my friends and I miss you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's different levels of that. And what COVID did by removing that, you know, by, by canceling so much, we didn't have those connections. And so when we finally were able to connect, we connected. Well, and a lot and, of people, I think that not only that, but like people that you would normally hug. Yeah. You couldn't. No. Like, I remember that we went to go see your mom, to take her some stuff. Uh-huh. And you had to drop it because the risk was too high for her health. Even though... You know, every, everything, all precautions have been taken. Nobody was yeah. sick, but there's still that fear. And that's like hard. Her health is number one, yeah. where you'd normally hug your mom. Yeah. I, for me personally, at that point, I really believe I didn't experience that. Mm-hmm. Because, well, I was around my people all the time, and it was either the kids or, like, my little bubble of work people. Yeah. And, I mean, we just hugged each other anyway. Yeah. But... If I was in a place where I didn't, I think it would be like living in a rainy place for me. Like it mm. would really affect my mood. Hmm. But, you know, you were talking about growing up. My sister mm-hmm. is the biggest anti-hugging <laughs> person. Now, she hugs her children. She does do that. But like she hugs weird. Like like she's not she's not into it. She does it. Right. But like daddy we used to laugh. He'd be like trying to hug her. It was like trying to hug a two by four. You got his <laughs> reaction back. Because she's right. like mm. you know? And I never was. Yeah. You, so there's two separate same family. You always wonder what happened, you know, for someone to think you know, to for anyone to be that way. You know, on different For different things. I think that Cassie is just like, don't like people touching her. If she don't know. Well, I think if she does know, sometimes she's like, get off. (laughs) Well, I I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I guess I don't know no research. It's hard for me to, it's hard for me to fathom that people, and it could be, so I'm not saying they're not. It could be. It's just hard for me to fathom that so anybody can just be in it that way and there's no reason and there's nothing behind them being them that way, but it's just who I am. Maybe there is. It's just hard for it's it's just hard for me to wrap my head around it. But, you know, okay. So another little fun tidbit for you. What would you do? For a Klondike bar. You said Klondike bar? And in my head, literally, I'm not even kidding. This is for the people. I say, what would you do? And he says, for a Klondike bar. And in my head goes, if your son was at home, cried all alone. That was literally, we are not the same. We are not the same. So that's funny because that was true. If you don't know it, Google City High. What would you do? Wow. My song. 
we are rated G. So Klondike that's we'll stop bar. there. <laughs> um but if you're a long distance. Uh-huh. And your love language physical touch. Well, then I would say this. There must be enough stuff in the relationship to sustain you. So you say it can be done? Absolutely can be done. So you know. Absolutely. No doubt. In my research of this, Mm -hmm. I gave it a goog. Uh Uh-huh. And you're right. It can be done. I didn't give it a goog. I mean, I Googled it, but like. Right. It came. I didn't actually Google it. Right. I found it, and then I researched it more. Okay. And yes, it can be. But it's very interesting, and I did not know it. Mm Mm-hmm. And here's some things that I found, and it's on the worksheet, but like, if it's your person, if, uh-huh. you're, if it's your person that you're dating, right. you have a smell, like whether it be your body wash or right, deodorant right, right, or right, whatever, right, right. write them a letter mm-hmm. to know that that person is actually touching something that you have touched uh-huh. much more than like an email. Don't auto send a card through postables, although a great idea, love it, mm-hmm. but not for the person who's physical touch. I can see that. That they're actually touching something that you touched. Right. That it's in their hands. Yeah. Good thing. And now, put your hand up. Now, we're going palm to palm. hmm Feel it? Yeah. Sit there for a minute. And it, as you sit there like that, mm-hmm. your hand palm to palm. Right. You should do it for about 60 seconds. Uh-huh. Can you feel, like, the blood pressure of my fingers? Yeah. Like, in your fingers? Yeah. Okay. So, you sit there, and then... Like when you're gone, uh huh. You, like you intentionally do it and think about it, knowing right. that you're going to leave the other person. Right, right, right. You right. can intentionally kiss them. This is not again not a makeout session. Like mm-hmm. lips on lips, like not not going. Right. But to where you're literally almost taking a mental photo, oh. so that you can say, "Remember when we stood right there, mm-hmm. wherever it is." Yeah. I would love to kiss you like that again, or. Feel your fingertips, the heart beating mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. your fingertips and my fingertips, because it's that taking them back to a moment of physical touch. Yeah. will do the same thing as the actual physical touch itself. Wow. I didn't realize that. I have not tried it, <laughs> but I found it interesting. Uh huh. And I think it could as one who is that way. Right. I mean, it still wouldn't be the same thing. No. Because, like, I mean, I'm a hugger. I want to climb in people's skin. <laughs> in a non-horror movie type of way. Horror movie? I mean, climbing in people's skin, that could sound like oh. Silence of the Lambs or something. Poltergeist. No. Not Poltergeist. Not Poltergeist. Silence of the Lambs. That's where he, like, steals the people, makes them fat, cuts their skin off, skin suits. Oh, he and I need to have a conversation because that's just, just too far. It's I'm too joking. far. Oh, it's too far. <laughs> it's mad too far. Yeah. Um. But, Sorry for the dog bark. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I put up another worksheet mm-hmm. to go over physical touch. Next week is going to be words of affirmation. Oh, yes. I know. Yeah. It's like, touch me and tell me I'm pretty. That's what I need because that's my number two. Uh-huh. Physical touch and... Tell me I'm pretty. <laughs> kiss me and tell me I'm pretty. Kiss me and tell me I'm pretty. Right. And that you need me. Mm-hmm. That's the way to my heart, people. You see my pictures? Wow. High five me. Send me a little high five emoji and then tell me I'm pretty. Oh, gosh. Um, which, by the way, we got um, a couple requests for you to just sing the outros from this point on. Are you serious? Literally. Okay. What was the one that we did? I forgot. It was like I got sunshine, but then I said something about Twitter. I like, Twitter, mm. Facebook. Mm. It was funny. Your spontaneity is funny. You're too sleepy right now. No, I'm not at all. Lies. Okay. Filthy rumors. Okay, whatever. You know why I'm sleepy? Why? We're sitting in a room that feels like a sauna. Because it's cold outside. It's cold. I can't even sing right now. <laughs> you can't sing? I can't sing right now. You can't sing? It's cold outside? Yeah. I really can't stay. What? I got to go away. Wow. If you, something has been so very nice. I hold your hand. It sure looks you better oh, sing. No, 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 sir. You better sing that song. That's all I know. Okay. I think I was Nick Lachey. I think mm. I was Nick Lachey and Jessica Simpson. And I think I was Nick Lachey. 
And he said something about his, my, I don't know. Something body's vicious. And then I get a half an hour more or something like that. Okay. Baby's cold outside. Google it. It's not Christmas. I don't want to sing that anyway. Baby's cold outside. You don't have nothing to say? No, not really. I think it was good. I, I, feel, I feel like you didn't have enough of an opinion. I mean, we need to play this podcast back then because I, <laughs> I, I, had, I had a few opinions. Yeah. But no, it's, you know, the, the thing about it is, um, in all seriousness, it's physical touch. It it encompasses a lot, a lot of different things, um, if that makes sense when I just say it. But uh, <laughs> after I said it, I said, doesn't even make sense what you said. You know, it's physical touch is not always intimate. It's, you know, and that's the whole thing about it. You know what I'm saying? It's, there's the intimate, but there's it's also. It's not always sexual. It's, it's intimate. You know, but it's not okay, always sexual. Exactly, exactly. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and so there's, there's just, there's power and connection. I think there's enormous power and connection. I do too. And like, yeah. and to be fair, physical touch can be sexual. And if that's it and your partner's not, then you got to talk to them too about that and right. vice versa. Right, right, like, right, right, it, right. It's all, you don't know. Right, 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 right. But right. have the conversations and figure out what it is that you need. But the thing about. Or you could be confused and you think mm-hmm. it's one thing and you need something else. Well, but the thing about it also is that there are different relationships out there. So people are in different places. Right. You know, friendships, you know what I'm saying? Re, you know, friendships or family, you know what I'm saying? So everything is not date. Everything is not necessarily dating. That's what I'm Correct. trying to say. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, but well, all. no, I'm saying though, what I'm saying, when people say physical touch in uh-huh. this situation, like if, if you look it up and I've looked it all up. I'm a, a lot, okay. Yeah. Like, no, right. I'm just saying it's number one, sex. That's number okay. one. Sex uh-huh. and kissing. Great. If you're talking about your partner, great. It could very well be sex and kissing. Right, but right, But just right. because your love language is physical touch or your partner, say, we're, say let's go for romance straight on. Just right. because their love language is physical touch, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that you need to have sex 24-7 and make out 24-7. It could just mean like, hey, can you hold your hand when you watch TV? Right, right, or right, can right, right. they put their foot on your lap? Right, and every couple decides that. Right, like, yeah. but have the conversation as to what that means for you. I mean, mm-hmm. it could mean 24-7, I don't know. Yeah. But live your best life, do you. But figure out what that is and have the conversation. Don't make a preemptive decision. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, the same thing goes, your kid's love language could be physical touch. Mm-hmm. And it could be that they need, like, that squeeze on their shoulder when they're doing homework and a kiss on the head. Right. They don't want to sit on your lap and watch, you know, movies. What? I tried to think of a movie I had nothing. In Canto. Yeah. They could just, like, need a squeeze and a hug. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, don't make assumptions as to what your opinion is. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, at the end of the day, just speak your truth. This is where I am. This is, you know. Mm-hmm. And this is what we need to discuss. You know, you can't, you can't, in any kind of, um, any kind of relationship of any time, type, type, be it friendship or, you know, your partner, you can't make folks wonder what you, the, you know, it's not about reading minds. You can't read right. minds. You talk. And if you, and if it's hard for you to talk, that's fine. But then don't have the expectation for someone to read your mind if you can't talk. Correct. That that makes literally no sense. Do not. Get, yeah, and I mean, yeah. we're not saying like go up to your friends that like you hang out with like once a month and be like, listen, my love language is physical touch, so I really need you to hug me when we greet, mm-hmm. rather than saying what's up. And also, because they might be like, yeah, no. <laughs> also, you can't be well. I've already told you, and I don't feel like I should remind you. It's it's important for you if you care for me. <laughs> you would remember the first time. That is absolutely un- that is absolutely unrealistic, and sometimes you have to remind someone over and over again because why they they could be thinking about something else. They're at a different place in their life, and you're at a different place, and so it's all about the communication. Yeah, and check so, in. So it's 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 best to remind than assume that someone doesn't care. Well, you know, um, Gary Chapman says all the time, and I mean it's kind of funny, mm-hmm. but how full is your love tank? Yeah. Like right now, and 
This is what he says. Once a week, checking with your partner. How mm. is your love tank right now? Right. Is it three quarters? Is it full? Is it half a tank? Are right, 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 right. And if it's anything beyond full, what is it that I can do right now in this moment that'll fill your love tank up? Right. And be willing to do it. Mm-hmm. Like. Powerful. What would that be? Uh-huh. Right. And if you think about it, it's like, it could be like, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Physical touch one. Mm-hmm. As I looked at my cute shoes. Um, <laughs> no, I did. I looked at my shoes and I was like, those are so cute. And it made me think of this. Mm-hmm. Rubbing my feet. Not like a full, and people say that, like, they're thinking like a full on, like, right. deep tissue massage. Mm-hmm. No. Like this. Like friction. Right, 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 right. Like that is soothing to me. Mm-hmm. Like a baby. Right. You know, or like playing with my hair. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's soothing. That's a physical touch thing. That's right. not a... Like a... It's not aggressive. Right. A non-aggressive form of physical touch. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense. I mean, I do. No. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. So next week, what is it? We went on again after we went off. We almost shut it off and we had more to say. Now I'm really done. What we're, is it? We're closing it up. Okay. You're not going to sing? Oh, not, no, not today. I'll do it next week. Listen, I told them to. Y'all can't be mad at me. <sighs> yeah, right now. My voice is grovelly right now, as you hear. I mean, it is. just like so, Betty yeah. Davis eyes. Her is all gold. No. Yours, mine, ours. I can talk for hours. I still don't get it. I, <laughs> I don't get it. That's fine. Okie dokie. Well, we will talk to you next week on Red and Green, the podcast. <laughs>